Mike back down in the workshop here today and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started working on my 2003 uh, Made in Mexico Telecaster that's kind of been a hot rod project off and on now for well quite a while so uh, when last we spoke I was going to do pinstriping on this well <laughs> that has since changed um, the reason why is because I realized after getting uh, the supplies that I suck at it so uh, I hired an, a local artist in uh, Ferndale uh, her name's Junkyard Julie uh, if you do a Google search Junkyard Julie pinstriping uh, Ferndale Michigan you'll find her website she did for me what has to be the coolest kind of country western theme uh, I was going for like a kind of a Brian Setzer you know Von Dutch kind of hot rod pinstripe uh, scheme originally. As I started to realize what I was going to use this particular guitar for, uh, picking it in a twang and some some hillbilly yeehaw music uh, on steroids, kind of like uh, rock and country, um, maybe not so much rockabilly, and with the fact that we're going to be doing a B blender on the Bigsby, uh, I wanted something a little bit more country western. So I gave her an example of the Waylon Jennings guitar that Fender did. And it's a telly, and uh, here's a picture of it. That Telecaster uh, has a bound leather body with uh, with intricate tooling in black and cream. So what Julie did for me is she did, you know, her own design. I let her go freeform, and I really dig what she did. You know, there's she she went far above and beyond on this. This is uh, pretty damn cool, I gotta say. She did, I mean, everything. She really put her touch on it, and I don't know how well you could see that but down right there she even signed her name so tiny I don't know how she painted it by hand so uh, kind of a little bit stylistic change I know it may not be everybody's thing but when it's all done it'll kind of come together and at least it's you know it's what I wanted to do to it whether or not anybody else likes it I don't really care <laughs> guess it's my guitar and check this out I had a guy from Louisiana. Uh, his name's Steve. He uh, runs a website called Black Whiskey Blaze. Uh, I got this off of his eBay store. He has a reverb store also. And it's a hand tooled uh, leather pick guard that he custom punched out a hole for my humbucker. So these parts were only put on here temporarily. So uh, when Julie did her work, she kind of knew where everything was going to go. I still have to strip this stuff off. So this perloid pickguard uh, is going in the parts bin. Not that there was anything wrong with it. But it's just not part of the new theme. Now the design doesn't look so ridiculous, right? Because you've got that, uh, that country western theme going on here. Check that out. That is just slick. And he even signed it. I mean, this was handmade. I decided to change out all of the fasteners uh, for slotted nickel plated screws the way the original broadcaster and no caster would have came with from the factory uh, instead of like a Phillips head screw. <clears throat> and there are companies where you can get these as a kit, which is what I've done. And then I had to custom order a, a few additional ones for the Bigsby and uh, I'm doing an electro socket for the, uh, the output jack. So the original version of this guitar, uh, back in the early 50s, would have been called a broadcaster. The problem is, is that the Gretsch company had already copyrighted that name, slightly different spelling. And Fender's like, okay, we'll change it. And so a brief period of time, uh, instead of having, you know, broadcaster on the peg head, it just had no name. And so those guitars are referred to as no casters because there's just no name on them. So then, you know, come 1952, they started calling them telecasters. And around that time is when Fender started using uh, the Phillips style uh, screws. So for a good three, possibly four years, you'd find vintage tellies uh, that have slotted screws. And they were, of course, nickel plated because chromium plating really wasn't a thing at that time. Uh, long history lesson short there. The, uh, the guitar became the Telecaster in 1952, and they no longer use slotted screws. But I want the look of a really early 50 Tele 
even though this obviously isn't an early 1950s telly. I do have to install some Callahan and some other uh, upgrades to the Bigsby uh, in addition to the B blender and then I also have slotted screws that I got in addition to the set that I got for the rest of the guitar. Um, I sourced the slotted screws from multiple websites. Uh, I think you can get a kit from Angela. Uh, just Google slotted screws telecaster kit and uh, you will end up finding a couple of vendors for it. So I got to get stuck in now because uh, I've been waiting over a year to collect my parts uh, to dig into this and finally get what I think my vision of this telecaster uh, to be completed. So I can't, I can't wait, but I got to slow down, take my time and make sure that I do it right. I have a pile of parts everywhere. I've got all of these slotted nickel plated screws. I got pickup mounting screws. I got pick guard mounting screws. I got screws for the, the tuners, the neck. I mean, everything. So uh, it took a while to get all that stuff because the, the kit doesn't have some of the pieces I need for some of the other things that are on this guitar. I've got the original Bigsby parts parts that I had on the guitar before. I've got potentiometers. I've got a CRL switch, uh, Emerson Pro cap. I've got, you know, the pickups that I, I've shown before. I've got an electro socket, you know, uh, uh, for the output jack. I have got a bag full of uh, just Bigsby upgrades from Callahan. It's a lot of stuff. So <laughs> it's kind of like um, a little overwhelming to figure out where I'm going to dig in first. Uh, I need to take off the bridge and control plate because this is the old one. It's chrome. I want nickel because nickel takes on this dull finish as it gets older. Uh, I'm sure you Les Paul guys out there know that. And then the little bits like strap pins, the neck bolts, the little screws that hold on the... Uh, uh, the tuners, all that stuff I got to swap out for a slotted screw. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the headstock and work my way uh, down to the bottom of the guitar. These these are not the Fender um, uh, tuning machines. These are actually Clusen reissues and they're nickel. So you can you can see that uh, patina they take on as they just you know they they dull the nickel the nickel oxidizes over time and uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to take out all these screws. These are the little Phillips ones. Tiny ones that hold in these Clusen style tuners. So that's the Phillips one and then that's the nickel slotted one right there. That's what we're swapping out. Now these dudes have not been off of this neck in forever. Alrighty, now that I've got the mounting screws off, I'm going to take all these tuners out of my way. I'm just going to use my my file handle with a little chamfer bit on there to uh, relieve the edge of the lacquer and the wood fibers just a bit. Now I've got that cleaned up. I can just drop these guys back in. Now one little trick I like to do here. I'll take a metal straight edge like this guy then I'll put them right on the edge of the tuners and that way I know they're all perfectly lined up. I mean, you could eyeball it too. I'll take some, some Minwax here. It could be Johnson's Paste Wax, any kind of uh, like flooring wax. Uh, and I'll go through and I'll lubricate up the screw threads, especially if they're cutting in new threads. It'll prevent the wood tear out and just lubricate it a little bit. And also there's some moisture in that, um, in the paste wax that will help the wood fibers. I'll run that guy in just a little bit, leave it loose, and I'll get the other ones in there, you know, along the line, then I'll put the straight edge in and I can tighten them down. Line them up as best I can. It's just a matter of tightening screws down. They don't need to be, you know, briefed in there so hard that they strip out. Come here and wipe off some of the paste wax that has oozed out on me. If you notice on these uh, vintage style Clusen tuners, you got these little holes here. That's so you can drop in just a little bit of machine oil uh, and lubricate the gears. And I mean just like a few drips. You can get this stuff. It's a Teflon uh, lubricating oil and it conveniently has this little tiny straw here. So you can put just a few drips down each hole.
and that puts it right on the old worm gear. It should be more than enough to uh, to keep this guy working correctly. Run the gear around. It's already better. I can already feel a difference. But helps free it up. Lets it do its job. If it keeps a little bit of machine oil in there. Um, they won't seize up on you. It'll help with the tuning stability. I want to put the string tree back. And so I need to relieve a little bit of this paint that Julie was so nice enough to put on here. And I'll finish tightening that down when I get the strings on it so it's centered up where it needs to be. Even this uh, string tree is a, a nickel plated one so you can see the the tuning post and they've all kind of taken on this uh, this patina so I'm just gonna remove these screws one at a time that way the uh, the neck doesn't run it will shift out of alignment all that work just to put nickel slotted screws in there I know silly right there's no practical reason for doing this other than you just want the look um, screws are screws man Unless you strip them out, they do the same job. <clears throat> so once again, a little bit of paste wax. Just taking off the excess. I just start it in there by hand. Get that screw going. Got to be careful because um, with the slotted screws, a screwdriver is going to want to slip off the head of the screw. So I just got to take my time here. And as always, you know, there's no reason to reef on this thing. All you can do is strip things out, so and that's it. It's plenty tight enough. If you're torquing these things down so hard that you're leaving a divot in the finish or that the plate is bending, you're, <laughs> A, you're probably going to strip it out, and B, it's way, way too much uh, torque. It's overkill. Don't need it. Oh, schmutz. Yeah, there. <laughs> Last screw for the neck. Get this guy in here. I'll just double check my. I'll tight each one of these screws are real quick. Get in there. One of the things that you should do when you're working with old style slotted screws, or even just slotted woodworking screws, is to make sure that the width of your flathead uh, screwdriver matches the head of the fastener exactly um, then you won't have any problems of it jumping out and you know causing damage the next thing we're going to do here is do a little bit of disassembly get some pieces parts off the guitar stuff i'm not going to use squeak 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 I'm sure that's annoying as hell on the video. <clears throat> Can't help it. Apparently there's a mouse in the guitar. Here we go. So I'm reusing that. I need to leave the bridge plate off until I get ready to um, do the electronics. I think I'll take the Bigsby off right now. And all of this stuff was just temporarily mounted on here, so when uh, Julie pinstriped the guitar, she knew where to put the pinstriping. If you're wondering, I do have slotted screws for the Bigsby mounting locations, but they're basically very much the same screws as the, the bridge plates held on with. So if you get an extra set of four screws for one of these, you know, the four mounting screws there, they're basically the same screws that hold your Bigsby down. Here's the uh, the Bigsby B5, and I've got it just tie wrapped so it's not bouncing around. Um, I need to disassemble this. We'll do that at the end of this video or towards the end. And we'll undo the strap button. <laughs> just realized that's the original uh, original felt washer that they put on there from the factory is still there. And it is flattened. I think I might stack an additional one in there. I've got extras. What we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of black ones in there and stack those with the, the white fuzzy felt washers just for a contrast. I think they look cool. 
I think it will. So there we go, like that. And just run that dude in there. Start this guy in by hand. Just to make sure I don't cross thread nothing. You can always turn screws backwards uh, when you're dealing with wood screws. And you'll feel when that screw rises up um, on the threads. And that, knows, that lets you know when you can start tightening it again and be safe that you're not stripping it out, cutting f new threads that don't need to be there. So I'm probably one of the only people that would have ever noticed that, uh, that little detail there. I think it looks cool. It's like its own little pinstripe, just for the strap button. You can see the black and white felt washers stacked on top of each other for that little extra custom, custom look. So now I need to disassemble uh, the Bigsby. I've already pulled the roll pins out. I just put, yanked them out with a pair of pliers. Uh, they're little steel roll pins and that's what holds the ball ends of the strings. Um, the Bigsby has <coughs> needle bearings in the end and then this front roller. And that front roller is held in place by this Allen screw. The bar that holds the strings in place needs a snap ring plier uh, to take it off and then you got an Allen key right there for the actual uh, trim arm. Obviously I don't have the spring in place here. So that's the original stuff from the original Bigsby uh, vibrato arm, which I have removed because I don't need it right now. This is replacing this part right here, and this is a B blender. These parts here, uh, it's a, a stainless steel um, string mounting bar or tremolo uh, pivot bar uh, from Callahan. It's machined with uh, recesses for the ball ends of the strings. It's got the uh, the hole there to capture the uh, the pivot for the tremolo arm and it's also got the the snap ring on the end there's this precisely machined uh, stainless steel roller that comes with a precisely machined uh, pivot shaft I mean that thing just glides on there like butter and that beats the crap out of this thing with all of its play it's upgraded parts there they came from Callahan um, Callahan makes like Strat and Tele parts and apparently they make Bigsby hot rod parts too, which is great. The um, the B blender comes with everything you need to disassemble uh, the Bigsby. That uh, loosens that guy off. And I should be able to push that out with a punch. There we go. That's the roller bar uh, that provides downward pressure. And it's a hollow steel sleeve. And it just has some bronze uh, bushings pressed into the end. And it rolls on that pin I just removed, but you can hear the end to end uh, sloppiness here of that shaft. Plus it's not really well machined. And you, you do have some bronze bushings, but really, you know, that's just a rolled steel tube is all that is with a spacer. I mean, it works. It's the way they built it in the 50s. But we can do better, and we're going to. I'm going to put some tri-flow on this new pivot shaft. Just a light coat coating. Slide this dude on. Give her a spin. Oh, that's like butter. We will very carefully assemble these pieces. I had to uh, I had to file the Bigsby a little bit to get the proper clearance here, so that it was just right for the old Goldilocks fit. Just about push it in with my fingers. Might give it a little bit of left taps of the hammer here. I don't want to just bang that against the table like that because it's aluminum and it could uh, bend it. Alrighty, so after, after some work here, I got this installed. I ended up having to sand these edges 
so that um, this fit, as I say, Goldilocks just right. There's a, it's a snug fit, but it's free to rotate. I mean, very little pressure, and that thing rolls like a dream. That's exactly what you want, because these grooves that are milled in here from Callahan, that's where the strings rest. When you use a stock Telecaster bridge with your Bigsby, and you notch the back of it to clear the strings, uh, it keeps the strings located, and uh, it's a pretty slick setup. Very cool. A little bit of thread locker here will help ensure that that doesn't rattle anywhere. So that is installed. Sweet. And you need a set of circlet pliers. Now I have these for working on cars and stuff. There we go. So that gets that guy off of there. And the roll pins are already removed. So this whole assembly should just slide right out. Bigsby has uh, needle bearings in here. Just gonna go in there and uh, lubricate the bearings and get all the gunk out of there and get it rolling around. Cause this stuff has Teflon in it and uh, you know, I don't think that needs to be greased. I think from time to time you should probably pull the Bigsby apart and uh, you know, service these little bearings here. But uh, we're gonna get it cleaned up and oiled up and working beautifully again. I got this all all lubricated up now and it's just moving extremely freely now. Just a little bit of machine oil, that's all it needed. Um, well that to clean out the old grease. <laughs> See, it's kind of gunky there. All right, so um, that's the end that the ball ends go into. And so they, they get pushed through and they come out this side and then they wrap around. The mounting screw is on the bottom on the Bigsby. So the B blender has to go on like so. And then that set screw on the bottom gets tightened. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of Loctite to this guy too for the same reason. I don't want it coming loose. I don't want to have to reef it on there. A little bit of Loctite. Start a couple of threads. So, get this guy on here. So, let me tighten this down the rest of the way. There we go. That dude's all good to go. So I've got, I've got, all all this stuff's made in the USA. I've got Callahan uh, rollers and uh, rear string bar, for lack of a better term. Term. I've got the. Uh, the B blender and that's made in America too and it also has this little job which is a plate that attaches to the back there and allows you to change this into a G bin so that's pretty much it assembled man does that move easy and then you reuse the spring from the original Bigsby and the little washer there goes on the bottom um, there is no washer on the top because otherwise it wouldn't stay in the recess. A long time ago, I made this little stainless wire here. <clears throat> if I can get it lined up right, that dude helps ensure good grounding between the Bigsby and the Telecaster bridge. It's just a little tiny wire, uh, just a little bit of stainless steel. And of course, I have more slotted screws here. Get these guys all started by finger. Cool thing about this paste wax here is if it ever gets really dried out on the surface, what you do is you just light it. You light it on fire and uh, it'll melt down and it'll kind of rejuvenate itself. So that is exactly where I had it originally. Yay! Almost like I knew what I was doing. Really all it does, is this little stainless wire here, is it's, it's just a ground tie-in for the bridge. That's all it is. Now the Bigsby is aluminum. And if you just take one of these screws and just run it home, you will absolutely torque this thing out of shape. 
because it's very easy to deform it. It's just sand cast aluminum. So I kind of like to do a star pattern and uh, tighten them down a little bit at a time at each corner just so that I don't warp the Bigsby because you can do it you absolutely can <clears throat> and when they bottom out they just get snug they don't you know they aren't tightened to within an inch of their life you can always tell the a slotted screw when you got it you know too tight because you'll strip out that head and send your screwdriver flying quick my roller still glides easily boom there we go I'm going to uh, give you all a sneak peek at what it's gonna look like that's gonna be pretty cool you know got the the bridge there when the pickups are on there but that that pick guard man that really makes it and the fact that it's hand tooled leather and it's hand painted pinstripes man I, I love it <laughs> So I think that's about it for uh, this video. I'd like to thank uh, Junkyard Julie uh, in Ferndale for her awesome pinstripe work. Uh, it is absolutely perfect for what I was looking for. Kind of like the uh, Waylon Jennings look uh, without being completely bound in leather. And then this uh, awesome handmade uh, pick guard, you know, hand pinstriped, handmade pick guard. Uh, we got the 50s hardware going on. I've got the, uh, the Callahan upgrades for the Bigsby. Um, for the string bar, that's what the back one's called, front roller bar, uh, it's a B5, made in America. Uh, the Callahan parts are made in America. The B blender to bend the B string is also made in America. Hand pinstriped in America, uh, right here in Michigan. So in the next video, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the wiring on this, because uh, on a Telecaster, the wiring also involves things like, you know, mounting the pickup to the bridge. Uh, you get a control plate that will have the pots and the switch and the capacitor on it. And then you're also mounting the, the pickup to the pick guard itself. Uh, I also need to run wires for my uh, painted shielding that is in here because uh, they don't really do much good unless the shielding actually goes to ground. So if you like the video, uh, please click the like button and then the subscribe button and then also the little bell icon for notifications because I don't do a ton of videos. They don't come out on a regular basis because like I just do these for fun. So I'm not really doing them to get paid or anything. Uh, but you may want to know when I throw one out there. Uh, I know that this is not motorcycle related, but you know what? I don't really do motorcycle DIY and this is just my own personal YouTube channel stuff for fun. If it's boring, just click off of it. Uh, it's fine. It won't hurt my feelings. Trust me. Uh, I'm surprised anybody watches these things whatsoever. Anyhow, thanks for watching and until I see you next time, take it easy. Mm -hmm.